There we go. Just waiting for the indicators that in, that said just that microphones are ready to go. Also setting up an alternative recording system here just in case. Hello and welcome. <laughs> That's not the introduction I meant to have, but it was one that happened. Uh, this is Legends of the Drowned Isles, a homebrew 5th ed D&D campaign. Uh, campaign 2, The Great Confusion, uh, born out of the... Uh, I guess spring and summer of last year and still going strong. I think we're up to episode 27, I want to say. Um, with only one being a lost episode that was never uh, recorded, unfortunately. Uh, this uh, is, uh, I've already said that part. <laughs> I'm Martin Caffeinated One. I'm the host and GM here of the game. But I'd like to welcome my players, starting on my left with Silas. All right, my name is Pat. I'm playing Silas Marsh, uh, cultist. And if you see me petting things here, or if you see a little black tail pop up, that is MJ. Hi, uh, I'm Marie, and I play Annie. Uh, and yeah. Hey, I'm Nax, and I'm playing Medric, half orc cleric. If you see a black and brown tail. Over here, it's my cat, and she's locked out. So if, if you see that tail over here, so, something's horribly wrong. <laughs> well, we have uh, the, the mass cats instead of mascots <laughs> for the show. Uh, I mean, is sleeping somewhere, so... Okay, well, at least <laughs> at least one for the moment might not make an appearance, but uh, there's probably a bingo card to be made of that. <laughs> uh, we are returning to the land of Omesha, the, the uh, town of Eilsfader and the uh, in Silver Moon Bay, on the east coast, or sorry, west coast of, wow, I was doing so good, Eskis, I believe. Eskis and Icro, yeah, Eskis, I believe. Uh, and uh, a little summary of what happened in the previous episode. The group faced off against the self-confident living weapon, the mighty Stormbringer. Under constant siege by its self-defense weather and attacked by water element elementals, the group managed still to disrupt the projections, uh, the protections against the construct itself by overturning magical uh, cauldrons. Its defense is down, and with the figure held within it seemingly free to help now, Stormbringer succumbed to the assault and was destroyed. When the central column of water inside it destabilized, it released its prisoner, who dropped down to one knee. Although having the rough appearance of a humanoid woman, this person must would have towered over them all by several feet. She appeared to be made of living crystal, her sharp and seemingly hard form shifting easily in shape as if borne by water. So we'll begin there. I'm not going to bring up the, the map because it's not exactly relevant at the moment, but just recall that you are in some sort of underground, possibly domed room, uh, came here through a magical portal that uh, rushed through some water and emerged out of a puddle on one side of this room. In the center was this this strange living weapon. Uh, seemed to be intelligent, but also somewhat arrogant. And you saw the woman captured within. Uh, as you get a chance to look at her closer now, you'll see some features of her body. Uh, as I said, probably stands 10 to 12 feet tall. Um, uh, has a humanoid form of living crystal. Um, as she leans upward and her face becomes visible, it is of slightly different appearance from the humanoids you've known before. The face appears more gaunt and more angular. Instead of a prominent nose, it seems much more sunken in with a larger ridge across the top. Uh, almost a, a flat face entirely. Uh, her eyes are made of what look like uh, gemstones, multifaceted on the inside of the iris. And she looks back and forth between all of you, uh, looking a little bit confused. She says something, and I had her say something at the end of the last episode, but in reality what she would have said would have been something that you did not understand. The language sounded harsh, but somehow strangely efficient, as if every syllable held a tremendous amount of weight, with no excess whatsoever. Seeing that none of you seem to understand what she's saying, you see her stand up slightly, cringing a little bit, stooped over as if in pain somewhat, uh, and, uh, and takes a moment to close her eyes 
and mutters a few words to herself. Uh, in that moment, she speaks again. In a language you now recognize as familiar, but you can see that it seems slightly out of sync with what she's saying, as if she's cast a spell to make it easier to communicate. Her voice is, and I will probably slip in and out of any sort of accent or, 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 or cadence, but to describe it generally, imagine someone with a thick accent, even despite the spell that's translating. The language and terms are going to be haughty and a little bit, uh, a little bit overbearing. At least that's the translation of tone that you'll get. Um, there seems to be the use of archaic forms of words, uh, as well as uh, the, the sort of um, slightly strange syntax. I'm going to try to portray that, but I figure I'd give you the general gist. So if I say just a plain old phrase, you'll kind of understand how it should be properly interpreted. So but it's like if you put in like something in Chinese and spat it back out in English and with Google Translate, basically. Not quite as incoherent <laughs> as that. It's more but, like reading old English, kind of, when you don't know much, it. That's a much okay. better one. This is Chaucer when in trying to do Chaucer texting. Just imagine that kind of combination. <laughs> uh, that doesn't strike me as particularly an efficient language. It, it, it doesn't in the way that it's translated. Uh, but the words that you hear will be more words than it seems she has moved her lips to say. Um, but um, as she, she looks at all of you, stands upward and you can kind of see that she doesn't exactly stand on the ground. She seems to hover just slightly above it, uh, as if no, not needing to touch the ground to stand. Um, she stands and tries to stand proud and tall, squaring her shoulders and looking down on all of you, which she could do if she were standing on the floor anyway, but here she's standing also about a foot or two up on the remains of the machine itself. Um, she looks down at all of you and kind of acknowledges slowly with a, with a, a nod of the head, a universal sort of gesture, um, but uh, appears to be studying you, trying to figure out who you are. Um, Medrick, you notice that for her gaze on you, it seems to last a few seconds more than the others, as if there's something more she's looking for in you. Okay. Thank you all Is for your focusing rescue. On... Sorry? Is she focusing on the symbol of Ignis at all? Or... Make an insight check. All right. Let's roll some dice. Let's open the dice roller. <laughs> Let's make sure I got... Okay. Ha! Ow. That's not very good. Unfortunately, just because of the angle and the way that everything is, is laid out here, it's hard to tell exactly where or what she's paying attention to. But she is paying attention to you for some reason. But as she speaks, Thank you all for the rescue. I have been in prison for a very long time. And it feels as though, and when she straightens her shoulders again to try to speak, you see her face uh, strike a grimace of pain. And she moves her hand to over her chest. Um, although not seeming to wear clothing, there does seem to be a sort of sheen of ice or crystal that covers over most of her body. Smoothing out, but you can see underneath it um, the angles and the, the sharpness of her form. But as she sort of grimaces and, and doubles over someone in pain, she cries out, No, they have taken it from me. I, I am sorry. This hurts. Taken what? And she looks up and, and seems to make a decision, pulls her hand away from her chest, and you can see uh, an open hole in her chest. They have taken my heart. It is painful. I still feel some of the power of Ignis in me right now. Would you... I could try to heal you. Would it help at all? And when you mention the name Ignis, uh, her face goes somewhat wide with shock, and she backs up a few feet, not stepping, but sort of flowing backward, uh, almost as though she's carried on... Uh, a uh, current. No. 
it is your people who have done this, isn't it? I don't know. We just showed we went through a water slide, showed up here. The, the Stormbringer tried to kill us. We killed it instead, and here we are. It was a Do horrible you know? device, and she spits at the uh, remains of the Stormbringer. Do you know who brought the Stormbringer? No. I was inside as it moved and was brought here. I could see creatures outside. I believed uh, they were... Oops, wrong scroll. <laughs> Pardon me one second. I believe they were Sakmahagan. But I hmm, have not so seen them that close. That would make sense. We believe they were what set this up. Uh, or set up the, they set up a storm around the town and around the bay. Um, Who are you people? You fought against the Tufan Agarnak. But I do not know how you knew to do this. We were searching for the source of the storm that was affecting the town above that led us here she kind of nods her head this weapon has been used in that way and there's supposedly another one no there is only one stormbringer Alex, Alex, Silas, mm -hmm. Silas, you, I thought you said there was two. I think there are two sources of the storm, yes, but there could be something other than the Stormbringer that's causing the other one. Could they be using your heart to cause another storm? I do not know the full powers that they have, but it might be possible. Stormbringer needs power. It itself is a control of storms, not... A creator with raw power such as could be drawn from my heart and old rituals old machines they could perhaps have given it power who are you you do not know me nope no and she looks sort of genuinely confused and then goes to speak and a very strange expression crosses across her face. It's an expression that I think all of us have experienced at one time or another. Hell, I think I experienced it about a half an hour ago. It's where you know the word you'd like to use. At least you think you should know it. It should be right on the tip of your tongue. It shouldn't be difficult at all. And yet, nowhere does the word seem to come. I am not... My name is missing I know not my name now but once I was called Regoletta as a child hmm. Regoletta I got a player I, question how do I, I spell that part to double check because I wrote it down two different ways and I just realized I don't have uh, Regoletta pardon me R-E-G-O-L-E-S-T-A That was my name as a child. It is the only one that I now remember. I am curious as to why I cannot remember. Is this your doing, Ignian? No. All we did was break you out of the ice, uh, out of the crystal prison. Everybody's so been forgetting something. We don't know what was forgotten, but everybody forgets it. Yeah, apparently there was a war. We won, and I don't remember any of it. Then you were fighting. Maybe you were on the other side of me. It's possible, but we're not on opposite sides now. I will take your rescue of me as good favor for now. But know that I remain skeptical. Clearly you are opposed to this thing. It is good that you fought it. It's good that it is now destroyed. Yes, it is. Apparently there is darkness trying to break into this world, and 
this town happens to be the place where everything's happening. Darkness. That would be one name for it. I fear that more will come. You're an unfamiliar to me. One of the smaller races, yes? Who are you talking to? Kind of looking at all of you in general. Okay. We're okay. humans. He's a half orc. Half human? human. Half, well, you are half an orc. Yes, as I said, the smaller races. How much of you is there then? Uh, the smaller races are. In this town? Everybody in town, I'm assuming. That is so strange. Do you have an overlord? There's the Baron that rules over the town. He's a human. So or so much, we think. So much seems strong. Seems diff different one. Then do any of my people exist here? I don't You're, the only, you're the only crystal person we've seen. I understand you may be confused. My father was a married, uh, a water elemental. But my mother was pure Atlonian. Was pure what? Uh, you roboted. Athlonian. Athlonian. Athlon is a myth. That's the second time it's popped up in our travels. A myth? You must have been here for a very long time, because if it really exists, it only exists in myth now. Has it been so long? And she kind of looks a bit disturbed by that, as if it is definitely news to her. Wait a sec, Athlon. Uh, Taraz Nakma Dwaga Ul, does that ring a bell? And she look, turns back and looks very severe at you. How do you know this name? We found a vase with that apparently belonged to him many, many years ago. Tell me he has not returned. Not that we know of. And I'll show her the vase. Where do you keep the vase? It's like the same place I keep the uh, graveler orb. <laughs> the magical uh, off screen bag. <laughs> you just have to remember you have a fairly large backpack on it. Yeah. <laughs> with precious items and things in them. Um, clunk, 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 whenever I walk in. <laughs> um, she kind of floats over to you and takes the vase from it. Uh, from you. It has his name on it, yes. And she throws it to the floor and breaks it. Uh, it well, cracks you apart in pieces. Well, I suppose it wasn't worth that much, but... Ah, he's not here. Perhaps this was one he left already. He was a tyrant. He was the best and the worst of us. This thing... Stormbringer was one of his creations. He had been imprisoned. At least, that was the story that was told. But he vowed to come back. If you know the name, I fear that he is t returning, or perhaps has already returned. Well, not we only know the name from that. It's the only reason we know it. And we only know the translation of what was written on the vase or that vase that used to exist because uh, one of our friends was able to translate it for us. He seemed a little bit sketched out when he first read it, though, now that I remember. The name holds much power. And in the presence of this, one of his vessels, it would hold a sort of resonance. A reflection of the thing that once was him. So if we find any more of these vases, we should smash them? 
Take care if you do so. Inside, this one was nothing. That was fortunate. If he had still been inside, a part of him would have been set free, perhaps. I had hoped to defeat it if it was there. But I may have acted rashly. As I am missing my heart and not... Uh, not where I should be. She starts looking around the room, kind of moving, flowing, uh, almost like she's she's uh, sort of hovering above the ground. Behind her, her crystalline hair sort of flows as if caught in a wave. It's not here. I had hoped maybe my things would be nearby. I have... What uh, things? I have a trident. It was a gift uh, from... I cannot remember, but I remember it. It is a part of me, as much as my heart, but they are, have taken that as well. I need these things back. Your heart, your memories, and the trident. Well, do you guys suppose we could add that to our to-do list? It's getting to be a pretty long to-do list, but sure. We'll keep an eye out for it anyway. Do you have any clues as to where they might be? And she kind of pauses and looks off into the distance for a moment. I can feel them, but I do not know where. If I were closer or not in this space, a space that's been corrupted for this machine's use. But you still have not told me who you are and how you came to be here. My name is Medrek. I followed Silas here. We were trying to find the source of the storm so we could stop it. I go by Annie and like you said, we were just people looking to stop a storm that hasn't stopped in weeks. You, Medrick. You are a follower of Ignis. That's correct. Die. <laughs> Don't give her ideas. <laughs> Tell me, what, what is the nature of Ignis to you now? I need to know. <clears throat> Power, healing, fire and she kind of glides closer to you and and sort of leans in the down. water it's a little mm -hmm. a little intimidating in some ways because she is nearly 12 feet tall it kind of leans down a bit to, to you and looks you kind of directly in the eyes as if studying you do you it, feel... uh, ignis hmm? go ahead ignis has the power of destruction but he also has the power of healing or at least i was able to help my comrades in the war from what I can tell do you feel the rage do you feel the anger oh sometimes but I don't mean everybody just, feels. not the casual uh, but the true the soul burning do you feel that and she looks very concerned as she asks you this question in the last battle uh, and the, by that I mean, I mean like the battle against the Stormbringer and now with me here in now, front of you what do you feel relief mostly I, I can I can show you what I mean uh, and I'll look to Annie and Silas which one looks the worst off Silas <laughs> Yeah, okay, so. so I'll put my hands. I get one hit point or something. Ooh, right, I forgot about that. Three at current, I think. But... Six. Damn it. Uh, 
I keep forgetting my dice. So I'll put my hand on Silas and utter a few words, and he gains seven hit points. Some flames hey. erupt from your hand and flow over Silas, but instead of burning, as usual, they heal. Although he gets burned. Yeah. That is four plus one. Wow. Damn it, Ignis. <laughs> so five points maximum uh, damage. Yeah. <laughs> But I only take you. Yeah, as the sort of flames lick over Silas's body and kind of find, almost like they're looking for the wounds to try to to to, to heal, uh, these tendrils of flame sort of backfire as well, swimming up your arm and kind of singeing a little bit. Uh, uh, but you're used to the flame. Even though it looks large, it, it doesn't hurt that much. And she looks at you. Things have changed since I was imprisoned. Perhaps more time than I realized has gone by if... if Ignis is of this character now. Uh, when... what year was it when you were imprisoned? It was the year, and she gives a date which doesn't make any sense to you. It's something along the lines of the fourth era of the uh, the ruined star uh, 150 years into that era. What? I'll just tell her what date it is today. <laughs> I don't remember the date, but like my, I'm assuming Matt knows the date. <laughs> I believe it's uh, 2100 and something because I believe the previous campaign was 3100 and something no I think that's uh, the, I think we're 4000 or so oh, right right 4118 4, okay. 4, okay so yeah um, 3009 or something like that should probably work that out um, I do not know your numbers but it sounds different in the reckoning. So it was a long ass time, in other words. If my people are nothing more than myths, then yes. The world has changed much, as has whatever has been removed. But I will you once mean, again take this on faith that you are not here to destroy me. Well, no. Uh, where are you planning to go? We can leave this room. It might not be pleasant, but... I would go seek my heart and my trident. But in my state, I will not survive. Where are you going? Well, oh, back to the Three Bells. It's uh, the inn in town. I see. I think our next thing is possibly to try to find the source of the storm in the bay. I believe that is probably where the Sawagan are. That might be where your heart and trident are as well. Sawagan. So uh, the name has changed, but I recognize it. Letters have been removed. We once knew them as Sekmahagen, but yes. If they are using my heart, I will need to retrieve it. And it seems for now, perhaps our paths are aligned. I will help you, and you will help me. Sounds good. Sounds like like a deal. Uh, we do probably need to have a bit of a break and a good sleep before we do that, though. Mortals. Yes, I suppose you do. 
We'll also need to see if this actually changed anything in the town. With Walking back to the end, not in the rain, would be awesome. With Tufano Ogaranak out of existence, what control there was will probably be shattered. And she kind of looks around. Tell me, how do you leave? Uh, well, we yeah. Get in that puddle, and yeah. I think the way out is that yucky water right there. Yeah. That may lead to a sewer. And by may, it, it, she means yes, it leads into the sewers. It, it's unpleasant, but uh, Silas can clean us up a little bit afterwards, and then we can all have a shower. Is this not to go again? Is this not your room? This is where my prison was held, but this is not a place I am familiar with. I see the symbol on the floor. It's an old one. It seems familiar, but I cannot place it. She floats over to the, to the puddle of water that you indicated before. And floats down, somewhat kneeling. Again, not really touching the ground so much, but kneeling in place, reaching down, pushing her hand through it. I can feel it. This is connected. I wonder if this was intended. I suspect that that either is how the Sawagan get here from their base, or possibly it's from the other entrance to here at the well. I don't know. You're saying you sense your heart and trident through there? I sense the power, the magic which remains. I think I can open it. I'd, I'd like to collect some of the crystals before we head out. Yes. Yep. There's a few oh, things okay. Silas wants to grab before we head out. Okay. Um, well, perhaps we can meet you back here uh, in a day once we're more prepared to go for a possibly longer trip. You do not wish to leave? Uh, we can leave through the other way that will go to the town. Wait, you can make us leave without going through the shit? I don't know what that is over there, but I don't think any of you would survive it. But can you... We would at least need to rest before we go, if nothing else. I have not made myself clear. I sense the power of the portal beneath this water, and I think I can open it. Yeah, no question to the DM, which water, like the puddle to the north, the, east, yeah, or the, the one The puddle that you came out of, the one that... Okay, the okay. Out. Gotcha. So you think you can get us back to where we were when we came in? Whatever the other end of this is. She floats over towards the uh, the, the ooze coming out and dips a, a finger in quickly, we're pulling the finger back out. You can see that the, it, it's sort of hissing and, uh, and uh, melting and she curses a bit. That doesn't seem to translate somehow. This is death. Gross. I'm not sure what this room was, but I think... I think it is a stomach. I see. Looking around, uh, she kind of looks at the, the dome overhead and the the sort of smooth wall. She runs her fingers along them. Yes, I think that... I think we are inside a larger thing. This would have been where food, beings like yourself, would have been placed to be digested. And as she gestures over at the pit of, of goo... You do see it sort of flowing in a little bit, as if it's getting ready to fill the room. Hmm. 
Um, there were I words think... of great constructs that were created. My people were skilled in many things. We challenged the gods. I believe this is part of something larger. And you said the green liquid was, like, coming up? It seems to be, you know, kind of looking over at it. It's a few inches further than it was before. And kind of burbling around the, out, around the other sides. All right. Well, um, are, are you staying here? I have no or intention. Are you I have no intention are to you stay leaving? here. I, I will have to leave. That will consume me just as it would you. I may right. not be immortal as you are, but I am not indestructible. Well, I would like to grab some of these healing crystals on our way out, at least. Yeah. Can I start yeah. to tug at them? Yeah, if it's only moved a few inches, then we should have plenty of time to grab those. Okay. Uh, why don't we do a little, uh, very quick skill challenge? Just to see how successful you are. For each success, you grab two crystals. There are, let me just quickly check here how many there are. Uh, I think there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten that you can find in the room. You will need to get uh, your successes before three failures. At three failures, you'll notice that the acid surge is quite significant. Uh so remember, it oh. is a, a strength-based challenge, but if you have a clever way that another skill could be substituted, uh, that would be sufficient. Uh, each of you will make one roll, and then we'll start over again. I'm I'll give Annie the crowbar are... back. <laughs> I'm assuming all three of you are involved in this. Isn't Graveler right. still around? Graveler yep. is still here as I well. I think yep. so. Yep, so Graveler can make a roll. He doesn't have a lot for skills, but he does have raw strength, so. Yeah. Grab the strong. Um, well, I, I would like to try to more work more delicately with Vice to try to pry it out versus like tug on it. Okay. To, to try to do it in a more delicate fashion. Okay. That sounds more like a sleight of hand roll than, than a straight up uh, strength roll. Yeah. This Dif is what the difficulty thinking. in these cases will be. Um, was it 15, I believe? Well, I rolled a 13. Yeah, unfortunately, not one crystal. So that's one failure. Again, typically three failures is the is the trigger mark. Okay. Graveler's going to go. Okay, Rawr. what's Graveler doing? Just draw strength? Yeah, he rips one oh, yeah. off the wall. No problem. Uh, Medric and Silas. Is it pure strength or is it um, athletics? Athletics, but it's. Uh, 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 oh, oh, I grab a bunch. First of all, uh, I don't think Graveler has athletics, so it was an appropriate role no. in his case. Also, as I suggested, if you have another skill you'd like to substitute, a reasonable case can be made. In this case, I think you're just doing straight up uh, athletics. Yeah. So two more for the critical success. So that's three in total mm -hmm. so far. Okay. Okay. Now, Silas is not actually helping with this because Silas is useless on strength stuff. Uh, Silas actually wants to gather a few of the smaller but more intricate pieces of the machine. Okay. To check out later. Because he has an idea who might have made it, but he needs to compare craftsmanship. Um. Regalesta kind of was watching the proceedings and looking down on you quite literally, but not necessarily figuratively uh, as you work. Um, you have hope of restoring this machine. No, I have hope of figuring out who made it for the Sawagan. I know who crafted it the first time. I would hope that they did not manage to repair it and teach them how to use it. 
It's Urn Name Guy. Who, yep. who but the person we were told to contact about the vases was um, Clockwinder, who is also making stuff like that little uh, rat okay. robot. So I'm thinking perhaps he was the one that actually made this and he's somehow involved with uh, with the guy we're trying to stop bring, from coming back. Um, so I just take a few of the more complicated pieces, stuff that's kind of sh like going to likely show. It's like, oh, he uh, uh, this person was very good at this, but he wasn't very good at uh, at that other kind of uh, bit. So okay, um, make a, stuff pocket. an investigation roll, I guess. Uh, yeah, that's the one. Oh wow! Yeah, um, there are some some large pieces that are are still intact that seem to show some of the inner workings of this device. Most of it was magically constricted rather than physically constricted, but there are signs of of some gears and some other things. You even find places where. It does appear that some of the device has been uh, reworked um, as though the original was indeed actually destroyed and this was rebuilt. Cool. Um, with the rest of the crystals, that's so that's one, one non-action for this. So that'll be one, uh, essentially one failure because you're on limited time here. So every action counts towards uh, the... the uh, these, Go strong, uh, people. Do your strong things. <laughs> hey, uh, Regulesta, could you help us grab some of those crystals? They have some healing energy in them. She looks at you a little surprised, but then shrugs, uh, goes over to one of them. Let's see what she can do. And I actually do have a character sheet for her. And athletics. That's our third failure. Yeah, unfortunately, she's Second. not able to. Uh, uh, well, no, my not doing anything counted as a failure. Okay. Yeah, it's a timing mechanism, not necessarily just a you fail against yeah. things. Um, okay. Okay, so we got to go with the ones that we got. We have so three. At, as the acid surges across the room, it's covered half the room. There are still the ones on the eastern side if you wanted to risk it. Eh, Silas will. He'll take a crack at one now that he's got the the stuff he thought was more important. Uh, athletics. Yeah, that's not a 15. That is not a 15. Who would like to try again? We've reset the counter back to three, and that was the first of three. Okay. Uh, I will, could, could I do the help action? You certainly can. Uh, I would like to do that. Okay. okay basically I'll, I'll, I'll like try to help push it with vice as they're pulling. Who are you looking to help? Cause currently there's uh, Medric, Regalesta and, uh, Grappler. Grappler, sorry. I'll give... Um, hmm. can we reuse the same skill? Like, could I use athletics again? Yes, you can, because it's a new okay. a new set of tests. Uh, I will give Regalesta a, help, a hand. Okay. Uh, do you want Regalesta to go next? Or do you want to try it, Medric or Grappler? I mean, it's up to you guys. Regal has to go next, then. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, she goes over to it and and kind of watches what you're pointing out, and then then there's sort of a, a a shrewd look in her eyes, and instead of using pure muscle, you realize that she kind of shifts her fingers slightly into crystal extensions, if you will, and just sort of starts prying around the edges. 
singing slightly. Words that don't translate, more of a resonance. And she uses Arcana instead. Uh, 26. The crystal pops off in her hand with no effort. Is this what you are looking for? She hands the crystal to you, Annie. Yes, they they were great help. They heal. They probably saved our asses a few times. Interesting. Useful in a pinch. And I, I put them in my bag. Okay. So Medric and Graveler? Oh, yeah. Ah, oh, that's a fail. Yep. Unfortunately, you start sort of swearing at it, and it doesn't seem to be effective. Graveler is a success. Graveler is a critical success, so he grabs two. So you're sitting at two failures right now. The acid is slowly seeping across the room. You can push your luck to try to get another one. Possibly allow the acid to actually get in contact with you before you leave. Or you can bail out right now. We should probably... Uh, guys, we have two yeah. each now. Yeah, we do. Uh, should we try for I'm some more? Or... What was that? I'm happy with two each. Yeah, same. That acid is coming up a lot faster. At this point, it's starting yeah. to pool around the other side and even into the center where uh, the machine was. Now seemingly discombobulated... Um, Silas, because you had actually paid attention to the machine before, you kind of noticed that some of it is starting to melt. Um, without the protection that it had before, uh, it would have been consumed by the acid. You do note, as you kind of glance over it, that the cauldrons are not being affected by it, although the water is boiling in around them. Hmm. Interesting. So, um, are you deciding to leave then? Oh, yeah. Silas will ask her if she knows where the other pool goes to. You Just so we know. The Essen? No, the one over here. Uh, and she this one. Follows your gesture. I could take a look, but it's going to be cutting it close. I was just wondering if you knew. I do not know offhand. I sent the connection in this one, but I have not had a chance to check that one. Okay, well, perhaps we can come back here. The acid, will ret the acid should ret retire. If this is, as I suspected, a stomach, it would be flushed out with all of the consumed food. Yes. Although when we come back, it's possible we'll come back into a room full of acid. That would be bad. Hopefully. Yes, it would be. And with you all gathered around the pool, you see her kind of reach down into the water. And while the water appears only to be a few uh, inches deep at the very deepest, her hands dive deep in. And you see her kind of stretch her hands uh, apart. And where she stretches her hands apart, it appears almost as though a, a, a whirling tunnel of water. Quickly, now, go. I kind of jump. Indicating for each of you to jump in. I'll hop through. Okay. Make sure Graveler makes it. Uh, Graveler has a little bit of difficulty. He's quite large. It sort of it caught a little bit in the hole and starts with all three of his hands to sort of grab onto the sides <laughs> and push his way through. Um Silas says, you're the last one to go through. Um, you see uh, uh, Regalesta kind of give Graveler a boot to get through. <laughs> Silas will help. <laughs> Uselessly, but he will help. Finally, it seems like and she's able to open the hole just a little bit wider, although you can see the strain uh, on her right now. And actually, standing close to help her, you can actually hear uh, sort of little... Ding, 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 ding. And you can see little cracks forming on her body. Please go now. Yeah, he'll go. And you all head into a tunnel, not dis not entirely dissimilar from the the form it was before, but this time you are immediately plunged into water. Spend some time in the water first before emerging into a long tunnel. 
twists and turns and uh, and rolls. Uh, behind you, Silas, only seconds behind, you can see the form of Regolesta uh, diving in after you. And then you all appear, emerging up out of the hole you came through before. <laughs> emerging up out of the hole where you came before, back in that ruined temple beneath the sewers. Uh, you hear quite an exclaim of surprise, first when uh, Annie and Medrick emerge, and seconds later when Graveler emerges. Uh, Marta seems quite taken back and scurries over to the other side of the room, followed by Silas, and then the very large form of Regalesta, who is nearly as tall as the ceilings are here. What? what what's going on? What the hell do I sound like? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Marta, this is Regalesta. Regalesta, this is Marta. She helped us find this place. Uh, and that, that's Graveler. Floats over. <laughs> yeah, Marta's kind of looking back and forth between uh, between Regalesta and Graveler, and to a certain degree, Graveler's the weirder looking creature, uh, with a mouth on top and three arms uh, and three legs. Uh, but as uh, Regalesta kind of floats over to her, she kind of, for an old dwarf, uh, there is a sort of sense of standing tall for that moment. And Regalesta kind of uh, leans forward. A dwarf. An old one. This is good for you that you live so long. And as she approaches, um, she begins to shift and change. I see that I bother you, and my form would no doubt draw the wrong attention. And she starts to shrink down until standing before Marta, first naked, but then a flow of, of illusion kind of floats over her as she appears to be a blue-skinned elf with uh, pointed ears. Um, the clothing is unusual it looks more like wrapping than clothing uh, it looks as though it's kind of over the shoulder wrapped around the body and then tied somewhere near uh, the, the hip um, her hair is uh, uh, night black uh, although a little bit blue in certain lights as well and her skin seems to shimmer ever so slightly like minute uh, 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 glitter or or crystals are embedded within it but she steps forward and uh, and steps kind of as she's slowly transforming, stepping forward towards Marta until she stands in front of her, still taller than she is, tall even for an elf, uh, but pushing only about seven feet now rather than 12. Um, you may call me Regolesta, and your name? Marta Pittigger. So, uh, were you... Did you do what you needed to do then? Were we gone long? Uh, well, a couple of hours. Yeah, that I sounds about right. I made sure the doors were sealed, at least. A little water has gotten through. We've had a tide since then. It'll be a little while before we can leave again. Safely. Well, that gives us a chance to rest and try to figure out what just happened. Mm. Mind sharing with me what did happen? You all sort of jumped in the hole. I figured that was a better thing not to do. We found the storm device and destroyed it, and she was trapped inside it. So now we rescued her, and she's here. There's a, a sort of nod from Regalesta at the brevity of your response. It is true. The device has been destroyed. You're probably not going to die all tomorrow. Marta seems less than uh, satisfied with that response. Question to the DM. Uh, how similar does her elf form look like a what's-her-face that we rescued from the underwater cave? I, I, I couldn't find her name. Oh, oh, oh. Mm. oh, um, gosh, I forget names all of a sudden. Doo, 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 doo. 
Uh, I know I wrote it down. I just can't find it. <laughs> yeah. And I normally have these these names right on the top of my tongue. Um, Sedona? No, not Sedona. No, nope, Sedona is the ghost. Lissandra. Yeah. Yes. Um, there's a striking similarity, actually. There's not exactly the same skin tone or the same hair color, but there's there's some similarities there. Because from what I remember, Lysandra didn't talk much. She mostly agreed. And she was from far away, and I forget where. <laughs> I don't think... It's mostly that when she spoke, she spoke very awkwardly. Mm -hmm. Very broken, broken language. And she was hiding something. Yeah, hey, uh, Rega, last of, uh, I hope you're not like feeling like I'm staring at you too much, but you remind me a lot of somebody else we rescued like in one of the Sawagans underwater bases. Silas is a, oh, um, yeah, her, and he'll put up an illusion of her. Yeah. Her. Close as he remembers. Cassandra? Less, less Andrea, yeah. Um, Where did she say she was from again? She didn't. She was a passenger on the ship, that's all she really had said. Um, Regalesto walks towards and, and kind of walks around the illusion. Interesting. I do not know her, but it is good to know that there may be more sea elves. So, right now we're in that room. Um, maybe we should take a short rest while we wait for the the tides. Well, there's smash beds in the other room. Actually, as you go to take a look at that room, it's been cleaned up. That's what Marta did for her last couple of hours, is sort of arrange that. The cook stove that's in there is actually workable, although the fuel is quite old. We can use this. Nope, wrong character. <laughs> uh, we can use this room as another place for us to hide and, and uh, down here when the when the rains come in. This will make a pretty good stateroom, actually. Maybe I'll even move in down here. It's better than the squalor I live in upstairs. Might want to uh, put something over that big hole in the next room. It goes to a place that at some points is going to be very deadly. I'll make sure you close that door. But also this door, the, the door that we, that I picked to get in here was very difficult to get through. It's open now. Yes, not... yes, but it locks behind itself, doesn't it? It does. She'd prop the door open to the temple. Well, actually, from the inside, you can open it without effort. Yeah, but but to get back in, if you if she was going to try to live here, we'll have to change the door a little bit. Yeah, we've got all the necessary things to fix doors down here. Now that we know it's here, it might be a little bit more complicated than that. I think that there was some magic involved in that lock. And Regalesta is sort of looking at the door and tracing her fingers over the, the shape and symbols and seems to recognize it, but not at the same time. We've come across similar symbols before. I know them, but I cannot name them. It seems so familiar, like a piece of my heart. Why do I not know this? We don't know. They call it the Great Confusion. At least that's some of the names I've heard for it. Seems as though everybody's just about forgotten a bunch of stuff. Goes back a few years, I think. 
I've been able to judge a little bit from the people down here. They don't change all that much, but they did. It seems one day one, one of them had a beard who didn't have a beard before. Looked like it had been a few months' growth at least. Like, like we said, everybody forgot something. Like the war that nobody remembers. I am curious as to what has happened. I suspect, and there's a sort of dark look across her face, which you feel almost was sort of an instinctual reaction, but she kind of quickly grows, gets control of herself. I suspect that it is the work of the gods. That would make sense for why it says widespread. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was younger, back when I was, back when I was Rigodista. The gods were never spoken of highly. They were cursed. They were thought of as enemies I know that changed for me but I do not remember how still I can I know of them beyond the world and pulling strings my people rebelled against this your people? And Regalista kind of looks to the rest of you for any guidance you might offer when raised with that particular question. Were you always like a crystal being? No. I don't think so. I remember being flesh much as you are. But that changed as I grew. I never knew the father. He was gone long before I grew older. But I know his name. He was a married named Abonex. My mother was named Lotia. She was beautiful. Strong, smart. She studied arcane arts. I learned much at her knee. But she was mortal. And I am not. Wait, so she married a water elemental? And there's a sort of sad smile on, on Regalesta's face. No, they were never betrothed. But there was, um, let us say, a conference. So she was never married to the married. <laughs> Silas says he's been waiting 10 minutes for that one. <laughs> Very possible. Ah, oh, man, I keep typing the wrong keyboard. Pardon me. Um, so how are you passing your time? It's going to be a couple of hours, so you will have a short rest if you want to take that. Okay. Um, Silas is going to ask uh, Marda to take a look at the door with them. Let's see if maybe we can figure something out. All right. Doors have never been exactly my specialty, but I, I know my way around them. I can repair a door if it's broken, but this is different. I've never seen doors quite like this. Um, 
I hear hit dice going off. <laughs> it looks like it. Yep. Um, he takes you over to the door and puts a bit of a performance into looking at it. I mean, he is looking at it. He will try to tell if there's any innate magic to the door or if it's just like a physical lock. Okay. Um, but mostly he's trying to get her involved in talking about it. And then at one point he's going to ask her uh, for the keys to the doors to try to compare them to uh, this door and uh, see how she responds. Okay. Um, that would be a, uh, a hmm, persuasion role perhaps or... Could I make it deception? Sure. I don't actually have much for persuasion. Eh, 12. Okay. Uh, yeah, she, she kind of uh, looks at you with a rather curious eye. My keys don't open doors like this. No, but it, uh, if we can change this door so that these keys do work, uh, so that your keys do work with it, then it would save you carrying around another set of keys or figuring out another way to get this door to work. Well, I figure that we'll just take the door off of uh, hinges if it has them or break it down and put a new door in. We've got plenty of doors, like I said, to repair the ones that are down here. That could work. No, it's pretty sturdy. Hmm. I don't notice any innate magic to it, so. You can make an They're arcana roll if you want to take an What's actual that? look. You can make an arcana roll if you want to take an actual look. Sure. Eh, 14. Yeah. It's not that it has a, a magical effect, but it itself was shaped by magic. And sort of a permanent magic status is is attached to it. Okay, so it's kind of magic-ish. Uh, he will mention that uh, to her. You do also know that these two doors that are inside, um, these ones have actually been forced. Yeah. Um, so they're they're slightly broken, actually, as well. Yeah, they're going to need to be replaced anyway. I tell her, in fact, she might just want to wall that end off. Uh, with the uh, the door that leads to the uh, pit. Oh, it could be a pretty good storage room, so long as they stay away from the hole. We can, we can build a platform over it. Where does the hole go anyway? Down into the area with the well. Uh, no. Possibly a big pit full of acid, though. Oh, that hey, would... that would be great for disposing of trash. Possibly, yes. Yes, I do say it would make a good trash hole. Well, that could be useful. But you'd want to make sure that people don't fall into it. Unless you intend on the people not coming back. And she kind of laughs and winks at you. I haven't held a grudge like that in over 20 years. In fact, actually, Silas just stops and thinks for a minute. In fact, there wasn't a way out of it. If it hadn't been for Rigalesta, we wouldn't have been able to get back out. No. Well, so, yeah. You definitely want to make sure nobody goes in. I'll make a note of it. I can't imagine that my ancestors put it on the plans to begin with, so... Or why they hid it. If they could. Mm. Yeah, I don't think this room was made by your ancestors. No. Oh, what was sorry, that? that was two at once here. It was probably here before the sewers were built. It's my only guess. Uh, well. Possibly. Or it's something that everyone was made to forget. Yeah, I suppose. Finally, they should still have that rhyme, though. About the torches. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
They're very useful, right? Well, I guess you yeah. can't get rid of poetry. No matter how hard you try. Um, Silas will do some illusioning and some sea shanties uh, to entertain people while we wait and to distract Marta from when I try to pick her pockets for the keys. <laughs> okay. Uh, make a persuasion roll, or sorry, make a performance roll. If you're successful in the roll, make it a difficulty. Well, actually, make it a. Okay, never mind. Oh. Anyway. I was going to say that would give you advantage on the sleight of hand roll to pick her pockets. Yeah. But unfortunately. Oh, well. Random number generators don't like me. Yeah. So you just have a regular straight up roll. Uh, Regalesta sits uh, in sort of a cross-legged pose on the floor and closes her eyes, um, sort of stretches out her shoulders a little bit and, and opens up her hands, a sort of lotus position. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Marta was... notices you kind of reaching for her keys and slaps your hand away uh, and gives you kind of a look, a wink, and a smirk. Now, now, I'm not your type anyway, dear. You don't know what my type is. You're too young for me. Um, Regalesta t takes a sort of lotus pose on the floor, um, and every once in a while kind of cringes a bit, clus clus uh, clasps her chest, and sort of moans a little bit, and then moves back into the pose with much forced practice. So I just like, lay back and make uh, constellations on the ceiling. Okay. Uh, it is a, a beautiful effect. Uh, Marta decides not to sit next to you and actually fusses with the stove and lights up some of the broken wood furniture, which uh, 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 makes a little bit of a smoky uh, fire. You suspect that whatever flu is here probably hasn't been cleaned in a while. Um, but there is a, a pot and she manages to boil some water. And from a pouch, she pulls forward some tea, makes passable tea, and if anybody's interested in it. Oh, yeah. Medical has some. It's warm. It's pretty basic tea. It's got a little bit of flavor, but not too much. It's more, more bitterness than flavor, I think, at this point. The time passes. That is fine. The time passes with all of you taking a sort of breather in a moment. Um, Marta kind of looks up. Should be about now. We'll know as soon as we open the doors. Uh, should we wait a few minutes more just in case? It'll be that fine. should be fine. <clears throat> Got an instinct for these things. And she goes, taps her nose. And trundles over to the door. Silas leans over to Medrick and says, I can let us breathe water. <laughs> It's not water that's going to be coming in. Yeah, but it's mostly water. <laughs> and Marta goes to the door and puts her hand on it and starts to slowly release the the, uh, the uh, handle on the inside, or release the, the thing on the inside of this particular door. And you kind of notice that she's leaning into the door, and it doesn't take a lot to figure out that she's actually checking to see if there's any pressure against the door before she opens it. But after a few seconds, seems very satisfied, swings the door open. A little water flows in. And where those raised paths were, there's still a little bit of water, but not much. It's mostly just the leftover pooling at this point. It smells um, sort of strangely refreshed as there's a, the strong sea, uh, sea water, the strong uh, salt water uh, has kind of come in. Done a lot of scrubbing, you might imagine, uh, as well as kind of brought in the refuse from the sea and then taken out with it a considerable amount of the um, undesirable effluvia, I think it's called. Effluvia? Effluvia, thank you. Uh, although it, it still has a bit of a smell to it. And the, it, the light is a little dimmer where the green glowing uh, moss or the algae had been growing in there. Uh, you imagine a fair amount of it now has been swept out to sea, and so this is a new generation that's just starting to get born. Lovely. 
Shall we, uh, shall we head upstairs then? You found what you were looking for? Hopefully that was yeah. it. I'm assuming by then, like, Raffler would have went back into, like, his little ball. Yes. And back into my backpack. Okay. Yeah, because he lasts for an hour. Okay. Um, as you move along and, and uh, Marta leads you out a, a different direction, um, but you get the impression that there are a number of places and stairs down here, not back to the stairs you'd seen before, which are around the corner, but actually to another set of stairs. Um, one of the strange things that you note as you're moving along is that there is water coming down the stairs. Um, must be raining still, Marta says, as she leads you up. Hmm. Um, and to the little opening. Again, these are sort of like little shacks, essentially, that are covered over the stairs. She fumbles with her keys and uh, unlocks the the uh, the metal gear, metal grate, metal uh, doorway. And indeed, a fair amount of water is pouring in. And as you step out, it does seem to be raining pretty heavily. But it's strange. Um, because over in the northern direction, you can make out one of the moons and some stars. Off to the sort of west, though, it seems like there's something obscuring the stars. And where you are, it seems to be raining pretty heavily. People aren't out on the streets. It is dark now at this point uh, because it's been a few, several hours. And as you step out, you are almost immediately soaked. Uh, Regalesta, when she steps out, doesn't seem to get wet, weirdly enough. The rain's definitely hitting her, but it doesn't seem to make her look damp so much as she seems to embrace the, the rain. I can feel it. The resonance in the water. Yep, that's rain. That's not rain. That is the Ew. effect of my heart. It's what? Did you count? That is the effect of my heart. And she kind of smiles a little blissfully at that moment. Marta kind of grimaces and pulls over a hood over her head. Yeah, well, sure. And she locks the gate behind you. So the rain is an effect of your heart? This is not rain. It feels like rain. I tell you, it's not. And she starts to walk down the street towards the dock. Uh, Marta just sort of wishes her goodbye and... Nice knowing you. Maybe we'll meet again someday. That's a possibility. Most likely. I imagine so. I think we'll have to get back in here at some point. Well, the captain knows how to get in touch with me. Good night. It was good to work with you. Till next following. time. Yep. Yeah, I'm following her too. As Regalista is moving down the, the, the street, you start to notice as you look from side to side that there isn't really consistent rain in all directions. It's almost as though there's just this block, essentially. And as you walk closer and closer and start to see the docks ahead, uh, kind of lower down from the town as you follow that main, stri main street almost all the way down to the main, to the docks themselves, um, she points. There, you can make out the light against the second moon, or make out the darkness against the second moon. In there, it is my heart. And as she points down beyond the, beyond the docks, you can see about midway through or midway out in the bay, what appears to be a roiling, twisting water spout about uh, 100 yards wide that's spinning and turning and twisting and throwing water up, which is kind of spraying down upon the town. And as you stand there, the water shifts and moves, kind of spraying across the town. Uh, the effect that we would understand right now would be like a water hose um, or a, a lawn sprinkler almost that's kind of a lot of force to push the water out, but then it just sort of falling down in different parts around the town. It is not a storm. It is a water spout. So it's way out in the middle of the bay though. Yep. Okay. I guess that's where we're going next. My heart is there. And there's a, again, a sort of breathless happiness associated with her 
that knowing that feeling as you can well imagine something of yourself that close that that close but that far away where do we go now we'll need time to prepare for a trip to there uh we'll need yeah, a ship we're not in any shape to get into battles right now unfortunately as, as much as I would like to be able to get this done quick quickly, I think it'll have to wait until morning. It hurts, yeah. but for one night, I can be immortal. Take me you to your three bells. All right. Yeah. We'll just walk back and take her with us. Okay. As you walk along, she seems to have a head on a swivel almost, looking around her as if none of this is familiar. Um, every once in a while, touching a building, kind of marveling at its construction almost. But then under her breath, as she's walking away from it, so primitive. They could do so much better. Have they forgotten so much of what we had discovered? They, the construction people? Mortals. The lesser peoples. We had plans to teach them so much. Not everyone agreed with the plans. I remember the debates. There were many who thought the lesser people were not worth it. That they would never rise to the level of the Athlonians. They weren't entirely, and she starts to speak in a language that you don't recognize. She continues to talk for a moment or two and then notes the looks on your faces, pauses, yeah. casts a spell once more. It's so difficult to speak in this form. I would like to learn more of your language. I just kind of picked it up, hearing other people talk. <laughs> Both this one and Orcish. I never learned the language of the Orcs. I only heard rumors about your people. You appeared. Good rumors or bad rumors? Stories. To me, you are little more than myth. I never faced you in battle. It is good to know that you are for more than battle. I'll just nod. Right. Doesn't take too long never, for... Sorry, go ahead. I've never taught anybody languages, but I've learned many. Maybe I might be able to help. I would like that. It will mean... I will have to simplify my thoughts to express them in your language, but I will do that. I don't mind. Do you, do you know any other primitive languages? I never spoke much to the lesser peoples. I can speak to elementals. I can speak to uh, some of the infernals. I have spoken to some Celestials, but their language is even more complicated than Athlonian. That is true. I have mostly relied on magic. You can speak to elementals. Did Graveler say anything back there? Your friend does not have much for the vocabulary. Mostly, he said, I will break it. <laughs> yeah. Good. Was enthusiastic about Rock. this. What? Yes, I will break it. <laughs> he was very enthusiastic. That's what I like to hear. And before you stands the three bells. It's not that far across town, after all. Lights are on inside. Happy music is playing inside. In fact, 
even though parts of the town still are occasionally getting drenched by pretty heavy rain, there is a bit of a sense that there's a little, little life that's returned to town. The cloud is not obscuring the moons anymore, so there's some light to be seen. You could pass by a few people or even staring and pointing at the, at the, uh, the stars above. One even points to a falling star way off in the distance off the horizon. Then they quickly scurry under an awning or inside as the water threatens to drown them where they stand, beating down on them like a, well, like a fire hose, basically. You enter the Three Bells. There's a good crowd tonight. Um, the four of you look a little bit worse for wear than what most people look like in here. Just because you've spent the last several hours in the sewers. Yeah. Yeah. Silas would have worked at cleaning us up some, but that's going to take some work. I was hoping the rain would have gotten rid of some of it. <laughs> some, of some it yeah. Although then you're soaked. <laughs> I mean, we are soaked already. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's soaked. <laughs> Except for Regolesto, who seems not to be uh, wet at all. Um, very light on her feet as well. Um, actually, no, this is not a strong passive perception group. Never mind. Um, nope. Purposefully made my character to not see things at well. That, that seems to have been a common <laughs> common design, weirdly enough. Um, mm. Not enough skills. <laughs> that's totally fair. That is absolutely part of the system. Um, where was I here? Pardon me while I scroll. Wow. Um, Anyway, you enter the Three Bells. You're greeted by Sandy, who sees you come in. T has a little bit of a, of, a, of a look on her face, as in uh, kind of look look what the cat dragged in. But at the we'll same need time... Some hot baths. What's that? We'll need some hot baths, I tell her. <laughs> yeah, don't come too close. Or if you do, make sure you have some kind of nose plug. You got caught in the rain, did you? Well, no worries. Everybody <laughs> else... Just stand by no, the fire only, for a while. only the rain. I think we're the ones responsible for it. And she kind of quirks her her eye up, her eyebrow at that. Okay, you tell your tales, Silas. You tell your tales. No, yeah, we found a device under the uh, in the uh, sewers that was keeping the storm here. And she kind of does a double take when she realizes that you actually might be serious about that. He pulls out a piece of the... Sorry. Yeah, he pulls out a piece of the device. Okay. Um, Annie, I didn't hear what you had to say. I'm just like nodding agreeingly oh. behind him. <laughs> um, Sandy reaches out to kind of touch the device, but then kind of brings her hand back, almost like it was too hot. Well. It's also kind of stinky. Good for you. And yeah, I will make sure some hot water sent upstairs to make sure that the. Uh, uh, in fact, I'm going to light the the boiler up there because you're going to need a lot of hot water. Yes. Um, yeah. Yes, we will. Will. You, will you be needing some I, some I, supper as well? Yes, probably. Um, I would not advise uh, taking the tourist tours of the sewers. Uh, it is a. Uh, I'd give it a B. Oh, well, I'll have, to, I'll have to scratch that off my list then. And I'll make sure not to recommend it to anybody. The guide was lovely. The scenery, not so much. I'll give it a G for gross. You know what they say about getting what you probably should have expected? <laughs> I don't know what kind of a surprise uh, you were expecting, but that wouldn't have been surprising to me. No. No, nope, but uh, going through that led us to this, and now we're now the town's just being sprayed with water from the bay. I gotta figure that one out next. And as you look over and no see Regalesta kind of walk over to a table, grab a bun off of someone else's table, and kind of start eating it, not really nonchalant and 
kind of looking around, looking at everybody. I, I like, no, 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 no. <laughs> this way. Uh, we'll pay for whatever she eats. Um, the, the fellow whose table was just basically ransacked. Uh, sure you will. And uh, he reaches out to grab her arm. And she appears to be this this mortal being. But her hand moves a lot faster than you might have expected. And kind of shoves his whole arm back into him and kind of half pushes his, his chair aside. You will not touch me, mortal. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Break it up. <laughs> I like start pushing her towards my room. <laughs> Basically, like, okay, we're going this way. The guy's looking at his arm and kind of rubbing where the probably is quite sore now. And she's sort of shooting daggers over your over your shoulder as you're as you're pushing her back. I look at his arm and say, Medric, could uh, could you fix that? Oh yeah. So what are you, you doing, Medric? You... Hmm? What are you doing? It, it, how is his arm broken or uh, it doesn't look broken, uh, but it, he's definitely favoring that arm. Probably sprained or something. I'll ask him. Uh, are you okay? Sorry, uh, she, she, she's not from here. Tell your friend that she should get some manners. And he's kind of like grimacing a little bit. That hurt. And he is doing that right now. Are you okay? Do you need healing? And he kind of, for the first time, sort of realizes who's standing in front of him because he's been staring at her this entire time. And looking up at the at the uh, the warrior of Ignis, uh, with your your brilliant signal or symbols on the uh, on the armor and on the uh, the buckler, uh, and also possibly smelling a little bit too much to be that close in his face, uh, he kind of makes a, a, a sort of a contorted expression uh, at first, kind of surprised, and then with mixed with a little bit of smelling of pickle juice, uh, and and then sort of like. No, no, I, I'm all right. I'm all right. I don't need all your right. help. All right. Well, as Silas said, we can pay for whatever she took. It won't happen again. No, no, no. That, 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 that's all right. That's uh, you're, you're that. Um, your name is Medric, right? It is. Yeah. And you are. Him. <laughs> uh, Lawrence. But that's not important. I uh, I didn't know the Flame Keeper all that well. But I, I didn't. And frankly, I was a little afraid of, of, of her to be some somewhat honest. But she seemed to be a nice enough sort, just never really got into the whole religion thing myself. But I'm awful sorry about what happened to the temple. That that shouldn't have happened to anybody. Yeah, thanks. Look, um, I don't know if there's anything I can do about it. Uh, I, I I work on houses here. I, I don't build them. I just fix stuff. But if there's something I can do for you, you let me know, would you? I will. I'm going uh, There's a request being sent to the Baron to have the temple rebuilt. Now it's in their, in the hand of the paper pushers, basically. Well, but I'll definitely let you know. That'll probably be as slow as possible. But oh, yeah. If it happens, you just tell Sandy to ask for Lawrence. She'll know who I mean. Or you mean, rather. I'll do what I can. Thanks. Never... That's appreciated. I never really, I never went to the temple, but I gotta say, there there was something nice about seeing that fire lit up there, day and night. You could see it from half the town. I don't know, it just felt nice. It did. It will be missed. Especially Until since... Until it returns. I can't... What was um, that? Especially since... He looks a little embarrassed. Well, I... I I don't remember, but there was something. Yeah, that thing everybody forgot. Then there's sort of a, a general murmur that goes up at his table, which turns into a toast. To not missing the things we forgot, 
and finding the things we need. Hey. Well, I won't keep you any longer. You, you better look after your friend. She needs help. Yeah, and I need a bath. And Yeah, you do. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers, and I'll walk back to my room. All right. Uh, on the second floor where your rooms are, and there is indeed the uh, the sort of uh, at one end, a separate room with a bathtub. They have a separate boiler on the second level. Normally, just for individual requests, they might just use the water they have in the kitchen already that's been heating. But because it's going to need all three of you to get as quickly a bath as possible, they've actually lit up the boiler on the second floor and start to boil some water. Uh, to be able to uh, to serve baths a lot quicker. It's more fuel, but at the same time, Sandy seems to think it's rather needed at the moment. Uh, Regalesta comes with you. Did you see what that mortal did? He tried to touch me. You took his food. I took food? Why would I not? Was I was hungry. Paid. So? You, you, you cut out Annie. Oh, I said he paid for it. So, so it was his. Is food not for everyone? You have to buy it. Also, suddenly light. <laughs> I, was, I realized I was getting dimmer and dimmer here, so I figured I'd pick in my light. What a strange world I have woken to. Still, he should not have tried to touch me. It'll be okay. Just don't. I, I will get you food. Uh, I, I will pay for for your food. Don't worry about it. Just don't go taking other people's food. Please. As I must. Basically, while I wait for my turn in, in in the bath, I go. I basically do a like how to human, like okay. <laughs> basic basic etiquette. <laughs> um. Let's go ahead and make a persuasion roll on that. Unless you can think of another roll which would be appropriate. That seems like the first one that drops to mind for me. Let's see. And this is, yeah, this is just to gauge kind of the, the effectiveness and some of the things you notice. Oh, that teetered so hard. <laughs> uh, it teetered on 19, but landed on a three. So oh, 11. Oof. So you're you're trying to kind of you know make, get some basic rules of etiquette, and part of it for you is kind of this strange flashback to Helena, who did the exact same thing for you when you were younger. Uh, and it kind of strikes you that that's actually part of the problem. She reminds you not necessarily of yourself, but of the sort of attitude that you saw from most of the royal children you ever interacted with. There's a certain sense of entitlement. There's a certain sense of distance. There's a certain sense of not really understanding the basics of how the world works. But there's also a sort of sense that the world worked better when she remembered it. Um, you know, it even the idea that they have to draw a bath seems like such a primitive thing to her. The fact that the food is not just given for all to eat is a primitive thing to her. And you get this impression, although you haven't had much of a chance to really improve her ability to to be human, if you will, um, you gain a little bit more insight into the sort of nature of how how aloof she naturally feels and how how distant she feels from from mortals. Um, it's a weird insight but it gives you some some feeling of who she is. And I get it, because until I had the curiosity to break from that, that was me too. Exactly, that weird sort of resonance. With this time you're spending with her, give me three questions that either you would have asked of her or that you feel she might have volunteered in all of this as she's trying to understand. If you want some time, we can we can move on or this is- I'll, I'll take a minute. Okay. Uh, but yeah. All right. 
who's uh, who's uh, taking a bath first, Medric or Silas? Uh, Silas would probably go first. Okay. Uh, unless Medric feels an absolute need to. Um, I mean, I'm going to take a bath no matter what. It's not a huge deal. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> and because because Silas is smaller, it's going to leave less grime in the water. Than yeah. Compared to if I go first. Actually, Sorry, Medric, Medric is just hugging the boiler, making it heat up faster. <laughs> <laughs> he he uh, kind of is his own boiler. He just has to get in the water and he can warm it up. Uh huh. Yeah. Produce flame. <laughs> yeah. Produce um, bath. Yeah, I mean, Silas will use prestidigitation to make sure he is absolutely clean. Um, and uh, yes, get. Uh, all the stuff uh, off of him. And then he'll spend some time just uh, basically washing his clothes in the bath too. Uh, and then uh, again, using prestidigitation just to like clean and dry them as he brings them out. So once he's done, he comes out and everything's dry and smelling fine. Okay. While you're in there and kind of leaning over the basin as you're, as you're now washing your clothing, um, the water seems a little murky, probably from, well, you having been in it, uh, mm -hmm. but it was refreshing and it is sort of cleaning off some of the, the in-ground dirt. And then it starts to swirl in the tub. It starts to spin on its own somewhat unexpectedly. Ooh, this is interesting. Silas will take a look. As you lean a little closer to look, you see, uh, swimming in the water appear to be a bevy of snakes. And then they swim up around your arms and pull you into the water. You fall hundreds oh of feet underwater and find yourself floating. Ironically enough, naked and alone, <laughs> but floating there in the water as these snakes swim around you. The cloud of snakes dissipates. And standing before you, not quite your size, maybe one and a half, two times, it's difficult to judge based on how far away she is, but is the unmistakable figure of Mother Hydra. Silas will cover himself first. <laughs> um... Hello, Mother. I, I thought this might be you. What can I do for you? I sense power moving in the world once more. A power I have not felt for a long time. It threatens me. Is this... Rigolesta? I do not know that name. He'll make an image of her crystal form between the two of them. Her eyes go wide. This is not the one that I knew, but this is another that I fear. She has no place here. I thought that might be the case. But there is a greater darkness rising. It threatens my place. It must not. By your place, do you mean where you are or where the clan is? My place in this world. Mm. There is a limited space here and an opportunity that I have waited for for a long time. You and the rest of the clan have helped me, but I need more. I believe there are several others who may be competing for this place. Some of them I can deal with. Some of them you can deal with. But this one cannot be dealt with. Does this one have a name? That I might recognize? It is an old power. Its name is Dangerous Alone. 
I thought it long gone. Let's see. Is it this one? And I will just very quickly, it'll be there and gone, show a picture of Cathron. Um, that is one I can deal with. Okay. For a time, our needs are aligned. That one helps to hold the door. Hmm. Is there any other information on this? This one that you need dealt with that you can give me? Otherwise, I will keep my eyes open for anything I can do. I felt the surge of its power. Oh, is it? And he'll give the, at least what he remembers of the name of the guy from the vases. <laughs> like Dwarga or something or other. He'll probably get the name wrong because I have no idea what it was. I just keep thinking of him as a Dwarger guy. Um, Taras uh, Nakma Daugo is the... Uh... There we go. He'll not say it completely correct just in case saying his name calls something down. And her eyes go wide. Yes, that one was dead. He was promised to be dead. Yes, we found a device that he had built, perhaps. I think I know who may have rebuilt it for him. It has been destroyed, but I may have a clue is where to search next for those who serve him. And she kind of floats closer towards you. And as she floats closer towards you, weirdly, she seems to grow in proportion such that when she puts a hand on your shoulder, it's twice as large as your shoulder. Take care, my disciple. I cannot lose when so close. This one threatens our plans and will destroy the clan. I will deal with him, mother. And there's a sort of intake of breath and she floats backwards, looking much more calm. I know you will, for you are of me. And we will be a part of this world. Yes, mother. And the snake starts swimming around you once more. And you Mother. feel yourself. Yep. You're being wrapped up in it. There's a bit of noise, but you can call out to her. What happened to my wife? Molly. That day. And as you're swept up into this vortex of snakes... You hear the reply coming from behind or behind you off in the distance. Not all who hear my words understand them. Mistakes can be made and mistakes can be unmade. And then you find yourself emerging, not head first, but almost in the reverse order, you were drawn into this tub. <laughs> and the water kind of rolls over a little bit on the edges of it. Uh, and you can see one little snake kind of swimming around in the water until as it moves through and around your clothing, it seems to vanish. Well, Silas will finish what he's doing. Um, and if the tub has a plug to release the water, uh, he'll do that and scrub the tub down before we put more hot water in it for the next person. 
uh, and he'll magically make sure that the tub is is clean as well so that they're not getting in uh, pouring more water in, getting gross crap on it um, and then he'll uh, he'll go knock on Medrick's door and say uh, tub's ready for you on my way uh, call me when you're done and I'll clean it out all right and then he'll head to Annie's room where I think everyone else was congregating. Do you have uh, time. any of your questions ready, uh, uh, Annie? I think it wouldn't really be questions. I think it would more be along the lines of, like, I'm teaching her not not to take food food from other people. Uh, I'd probably probe on, well, how did that work? Like, the whole there's food for everyone. And it's, it's just food. It's yours to take thing. Okay. Like so stuff like that, but like whatever I'm I'm talking about trying to explain to her and versus how Okay. I'd be curious about that. You get the impression that um Athlonian society had definite strata. The Athlonians themselves were the topmost of that strata. And they had servants, some of them humanoid, many of them not humanoid, who did much of the work. They also had, uh, as she would describe them, um, automata. They had machines that did the work. And everything was shared. Everything was communal. The notion of having to get your own food made no sense to her. And it took a little while to explain that. Um, the notion that there was food that was someone else's didn't make any sense. It was there, and therefore you could eat. There was plenty. There's a bit of nostalgia, though, as she describes having to leave that all behind. When she became no longer a mortal, she no longer had to eat. She no longer had to drink. So she no longer had to partake in that part of society. And there's a little bit of regret there. She knows much of who she is in terms of her being an immortal. She does not age. She does not need to eat or drink. She does not need to eat or to sleep or, or to, uh, to rest. But how that transition happened, she's not entirely certain of. It seems to have appeared when she was a young teenager, when the married side of her genealogy started to emerge. There's also this weird sense of pride and embarrassment about the Athlonian heritage. Pride because she knows that they had achieved much and she had been raised to believe, acknowledge, and support that belief. But also knowing that they could be terrible, terrifying, that they believe their place was not adorned, uh, not not adorned, sorry, but not uh, not given by godly dominion, but that they took their place in the universe. And those that could not stand up to them were subjugated. One other piece of information kind of slips out as she sort of talks a little bit about Medric. Um, take your friend, for example. Medric. His people did not exist when I was young. They were brought here to fight us. I am glad to see that that was not all they were. And do you have a follow-up question, or are you happy with that? Um... She, she'd basically continue, like, just talking about comparing, basically. Okay. Um, but she, she'd probably, like, for example, like, if, if they had servants, would they be allowed to take the, the food, the same food at the table of their master? Right? That, that type of thinking? 
Sure. Trying to go that way. It would be kind of, it would depend. It would depend yeah. on the level of the servant and the master. But many of the, the servants uh, were treated well. They were treated like members of the family, just always, uh, always declared to be uh, inferior. Uh, mm -hmm. They would try to train them. They would try to teach them. But there was something that they could not grasp or it was something uh, that they were too far below. In, in their language, in their, their thinking, that's the way it was. Mm -hmm. um, oh. So, but, but you'll, uh, Annie will take that, that approach to like, it, it's as if someone very below you, uh, but below in the hierarchy were to try to take someone something from someone who, who from the table of the highest person that's how it's seen just in general yeah yeah and and even then uh, it wasn't as though um they would care all that much if it was taken yeah. but there would be some sort of notion of 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 a little bit of embarrassment for the person who took it but it wouldn't yeah. necessarily be it wouldn't be like it's a, you know high crime to steal an apple it would yeah. just be like well, if you've stolen the last apple that that Athlonian wanted, then you will be embarrassed. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Medric. You. You're taking a bath. The water's nice not quite and hot. Enough. It's not quite warm enough. The boiler doesn't seem to be getting the temperature really you want. Sad faces. Do you do anything about that, or do you just accept it? Uh, can I produce a flame in such a manner that it won't burn the place down? Probably. Because if so, I'll do that. Okay. You kind of walk over to the boiler. It's not really much more than a metal casing in which a, a fire can be, be lit and water gets gets uh, flowed through the, the top part of it. But you kind of stick your hand into the fire and produce flame. And you can, you can hear it kind of warming up a little bit. The metal of the of the drum is starting to kink a little bit. Uh, as you're a little bit more intense than it's used to, but you're only giving a little bit extra boost in the flame, and then all of what's inside is burning quite nicely. It starts to steam a little bit. It feels much better when you step into the, the bath this time. That's it. You have a bath. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I relax. When you come out... Like in that scene from The Witcher... <laughs> I haven't seen it, sorry. Okay. Uh, when you come out, you feel rejuvenated somewhat. And you can kind of feel the heat on your skin. Um, in fact, you're slightly steaming. Uh, at first you think, well, it's just, you know, warm water connected to slightly cold air outside. No, you're actually steaming. And then your skin starts to ignite. It doesn't feel bad at all. Cool. It was quite natural, in fact. I mean, hot. <laughs> There's a little bit of a smell of smoke, though, as you realize where you're stepping on the floor. You're leaving uh, ashy footprints as your feet are starting to burn into the floor a little bit. Oh, shit. What do you do? I'll step back into the tub. Okay. The porcelain is, is heating up. It seems to be withstanding it. but then the flames get larger around you. And now you no longer feel like the flame is on the surface of your skin. It is flowing out of you from your central core being. It feels good. It feels as though you have, for the moment, the eye of Ignis upon you. Even nice. though it's nighttime, even though Ignis is not outside at all, even though Ignis has closed his eye to the world, for you, in that instant, you feel that heat, that warmth, that comfort, that strength, that ferocity, that inner being growing. And then it slowly fades downward. I'll close my eyes. Ignis, what should I do? Uh, just in case, like, just in case you can hear me. It's not a word that comes back, but the sense of a word. F 
fight. And then as you open your eyes, you see your skin has returned to normal. The room is steamy, as whatever water was in this room has now basically been evaporated, turning it into a sauna briefly. You do hear the, the sound of the metal clanking over by the boiler. It has boiled dry. It should not boil dry. There's supposed to be a steady stream of water, but it seems to have boiled away very, very quickly. Oh, shit. Um... All right, so I'm, I'm just gonna go get. I'm, I'm well. I'm gonna get dressed first of all, then go inform uh, Sandy. Was it Sandy that yeah. we need more water? All right. Um, you are leaving the trail of steam as you come down. It draws a few eyes. Uh, Lawrence looks over at you, kind of even more impressed than he was just a few minutes ago. Uh, Sandy smiles. Looks like you've had a good uh, bath. Warm enough that was for great. you. No. Oh, sorry. There's only so much we can do. <laughs> no worries. Uh, great, so I'll ask Sandy for more water. Okay. I'll go and make sure that the uh, the pipes are opened up full then to make sure there's there's plenty for you. Anything else I can get you, dear? Oh, uh, no, I'm good. By the way... We'll come down for supper later. I like the eyes. I don't know how you're doing it, but it's... Kind of neat. Thanks. It's Ignis. I'm sure it is. And then you go back upstairs? Yeah. I just want to make sure there's water for Annie <laughs> before I go like, oh, hey, Annie, by the way, I have burnt all the water in my bed. <laughs> you go back up and, and you can hear now the water rushing into the basin again. Um, after a couple of minutes, and you get the impression that she went from, oh, the tap just needs to be at half, to, holy shit, let's put it at full, <laughs> to make sure it gets <laughs> there. Um, and the water's a little tepid because it's it's, uh, it's rushing in so quickly, there's not really a lot of time to heat up. But uh, if you kind of leave it there for a little while, you think it's probably going to be fine. All right. And uh, you go back into where? Are you just going back to your room or back to where everybody's gathering, I guess, in Annie's room? Gathering, yeah. Okay. When Medrick steps in, the first thing that all of you notice is that his eyes have taken on the golden hue of the sun. That's new. I have to like, my hand mirror out of a drawer. You what? Can you blast fire out of your eyes now? What's different? And I'll look at a mirror. <laughs> I, I pass a mirror over okay. to you, a okay. hand mirror. And you notice not only this golden glow, but it kind of glows around your eyes as well. Um, almost as though your eyes themselves are glowing orbs. Even through a little bit of Whoa. the skin here and there. Is my vision different at all? Not at the moment. Maybe you need to sleep. So I was having a bath and... The water, the water wasn't hot enough because because it never is, so I warmed it up a little uh, vigorously, and it, it felt like Ignis was one with me, and I, I was one with Ignis, and he said to fight. And now I guess my eyes are gold. Huh. Regalesta kind of looks over at you and kind of quirks an eyebrow. You are changing. You are growing to be more. Perhaps Good. one day you will be immortal. I was contacted by mother while I was in the bath. She said that we have to we have to face that guy with the vases. Uh, he has to be taken down. He's a, a major threat. That's unusual that I mean, if both of our if both of our you know, benefactors are telling us that we have to go after something, then I would suggest it's something quite major. Your and mother is well well informed. Whoa, everybody's talking once. <laughs> okay. Well, if my mother appears to me in the bathtub, I'll be freaking out. 
<laughs> yeah. Your mother Regular. seems to be well informed. It does confirm the threat. And you said he was a terrible being also, Regalesta. Terrible and beyond measure the most powerful of our kind who's ever existed. He tried to destroy the world in a way. He almost did. Hmm. He would not suffer anyone taking an apple from his table. She turns to Annie and says that. I nod, understanding. And I think that's where we're going to end for the evening. Congratulations. You guys just leveled up. Woo! Uh, and I was kind of wondering if that was the reasoning behind like the gold <laughs> eyes. but <laughs> Once the eyes started glowing, I was like, ding, oh. level up. Level <laughs> So we'll we'll talk more about the specifics of the uh, the path of Ignis, uh, the path of the Kamar, uh, for you, Medric. I have a couple things to uh, discuss. I have to finalize something. Um, All right. But I. Think... Ooh, I get expertise and two more skills. <laughs> skills are important in this game, <laughs> as we've seen. <laughs> times we've had difficulties. Wait, do I get at level six? Uh, uh, well, we're, we'll figure that out uh, right uh, before the next session, or in the meantime. In any case, uh, I want to thank my players for jumping in on this this post-major battle, perhaps pre-battle kind of session. We'll see what happens next time. Uh, if you've been enjoying it, then uh, thank you for enjoying it. You can watch it on YouTube, youtube.com slash ENCAF1 if you haven't seen it already. Uh, if you are watching it there, know that you can catch it live on uh, Sunday afternoons, 3 o'clock Atlantic Standard Time. Or Atlantic Daylight Time. I forget exactly what time it is. Atlantic Time. It's one hour beyond East Coast. Let's do it that way. If that makes any sense. Uh, out in the middle of the water, technically. Um, <laughs> but uh, twitch.tv slash ENCAF1 for that. Also, find us on Facebook. That's facebook.com slash LOTDI. Uh, thanks again to my players. We shall see you thanks again for more, more Legends of the Drowned Dials. <laughs>